Now I'm going to paint a very attractive picture for you now in watercolour and these are the materials that I'm using. First of all in my hand I have some kitchen roll. Now this kitchen tissue is really useful. I've always got it at hand, generally in my left hand, uh, being right-handed. And it's used for mopping up and you'll also see me use it for the sky. And you can also wipe your brushes on it, you know, if you get too much on your brush you can wipe it off. So it's a very handy piece of equipment. A selection of brushes, I usually go for a number one, uh, three and six, and then I use a white brush which I've got over here. Um, but you can have all sorts of different brushes, it, it doesn't really matter, it, it, as long as it does the job. And the other, other one, I, I usually have a very fine brush like this one. Uh, this is a, an O gauge. I've even used double O gauge or triple O gauges, but we won't be using them in the picture like this. But these are always useful to have. And then we've got the water. I've got a stainless steel container and water, but really a, even a jam jar would work. Now my um, watercolor over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix um, blue to start with. This is going to be on the sky. And one little tip that I'll give you, you can also get hold of. You can't buy them in pans, but you can, you can buy them in um, tubes. There's a little bit of Chinese white. Now what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of that on there. You'll see why in a moment. And can you just see that on the screen, can you? Yes, I'll just move this up a bit. The Chinese white there. Now that will act when you're doing a sky. It's a nice idea to add a little bit of that to it. Let me just show you how I would be doing that. Just a little bit of that into the blue. I've already put the blue in here, this mix of blue. Uh, I keep it here because if I want to use a little bit more strength on it, uh, it probably won't need all of that white. Uh, but I'll leave it there in case I do. Now, you see the mixture has changed. It's It's got a, um, a little more creamy. Uh, and that means that when it goes onto the paper, it's just a little easier to manage. Okay, so here we go. Now, I, you won't be seeing me dipping in here because I can't do the two things at once. So I'll be starting with the sky. Right, we're ready to go now with the sky. Now, just before you start, it's always a good idea to get a piece of spare watercolour paper and just try out the sky first of all. That's what it's going to look like. Okay. And if you're happy with it, go ahead. If it's too strong, then you put a little bit more water in it. If it's too weak, you put a little bit more water, um, a little bit more paint on it. And make stronger mix okay but that looks fine to me so let's get going and another thing just before we start is if I put the sky in some of the water will probably run down here you know you can't really avoid that so what I always do is turn it upside down I also put just a little bit of a support behind it it's not very thick it doesn't have to be very very thick but that means that when we wash the sky and we put it up a little bit so you can see it better like that it's all going to run down here. This is where it will kept down here. Okay, so here we go, ready to go. Now what I want to do is I want to come down in here. I'm using my half inch brush here. You can use a one inch brush, but I'm going to decide to, I think, to use my half inch. It's a little bit easier to get in between these areas. Okay, I see. Now what the important thing is to keep a bead running. A bead is, is here. Let me just make it a bit more obvious there. And that means that it won't dry out because if it dries out on me, I've got a bit of a problem on my hands. It will look awful. So keep that bead running and keep checking it as you go along. You want to get as close as you can with the building because it's not easy to get the blue off it if it happens to stray. There we are, now. the bead is still there and just need to fill it up like that. Now, at the bottom here I'm just going to put just a little touch more blue. Now what I've done is I've touched the pure watercolour and just rubbed it in. Okay. That's fine. You'll see the scent of that in just a little while. What I'm going to do is just take off 
uh, in case that runs back into the picture, I don't want that to happen. Turn it around. You've got to move fairly swiftly here, and probably another piece of cloth is a good idea. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dip my brush into water and dry it ever so slightly and then put it on to the paper like this. Okay. Find a few clouds, there's one there. Oh, I like that one going in there. I don't want to ruin that. Like that. And then maybe just one down here. Now what you do then is you use your tissue to blot it off with. Now you've got to be careful you don't touch the rest of the sky, so you can only just one bit. Okay, turn it over and then do it again. Okay. But to keep turning it round, I know it's a pain in the bum, but if, if we don't do this, what would happen is some of the blue, oh, I like that formation there, that looks good. And what we do is just do that just a little bit more. Now I will show you how you can come back on this in a little while once it's all dry, but really you want to be a little bit careful of that. That looks good to me. That's as good as we're going to get. Okay, not worth doing anymore. What you're going to do is wait for that to dry now. Now with the sky complete, we've got to think about the background trees there. Now I'm going to start by trying to put in the colour here. Now use the same technique as we did before, just test it out on here. If it's too strong, as that is a little bit too strong, weaken it down, a little bit more water, until you get to about the right consistency. That's about right. You see the difference between that and that. Okay, so that's uh, that's fine. So that's that's the colour we're going to be doing it. And what we want to do is suggest trees in the background. Now these are not these ones in the foreground. These are the ones behind. Okay, so we just do again. Keep it nice and neat here, and leave a few gaps in the trees. And we don't want a, a, a continual line, so when you get to there, stop. And then over here, we can make it come, come out again, again, right up close to the buildings. Like that. And again, leave some little gaps. Like that. These are not going to be seen that well because they're going to be um, covered. A little bit more water in that. As the watercolour dries, you'll find what happens is it tends to thicken up. The colours get a little stronger. Now you've got to be careful there. I'm going to do a little bit more up there. See? You're going to have to wait again for it to dry. It's one of the penalties of watercolour. You have to wait around a bit. But that looks nice there. I like the pattern I've got there. Now down here. I want to stop about there. By giving the, me this lighter background, I like that hole there, I'm going to leave that alone. It means that when I put the trees on later on, these trees, forward trees, they'll go on nicely. I've got some more over here on this side. Uh, let's do this too. That's about as far as I think I want the backgrounds to be. So you're not going to see a lot of this because that, that's going to dry out quite light in fact. And I might as well go all over that because we're going to be doing that tree heavier. When you get down to here, this forward area, you want to give the idea of some foliage. You want to leave it as light as you can because I should be putting some light colours on that in a while. There we are. That's excellent. I'll just take some of that surface watercolour off. It just saves the drying time. Just a little bit. I think that's all right over there. And make sure we've got it right up to the buildings, the edge of the buildings. Like that. Okay, now we can leave that. That's going to dry off and we can't do anything with it. What we can do though, is we can do things that um, are not going to be touching the trees. The problem is with this area, for instance, what would happen is it would run into that and we don't want that to happen. 
but what we can do is to do here is I'm going to put a little bit of ochre and a little bit of Payne's Grey together. And this is um, yellow ochre and Payne's Grey. Now you can use any colours you like, but what I'm doing is just um, in fact, I think I'd make raw umber rather than Payne's Grey. I know I'm, I'm mixing colour here, you can't see me folks, but I am. And what I want to do here is I want to put some colour on here. Now this is a mixture, as I say, of Payne's Grey and a little bit of raw umber I've decided to do, not, not ochre in the end. Okay, I'll just leave that there for the time being. And I think the same colour, I think I kind of like that colour here too on the roof and we come down here that will stay white there well yeah I think it will stay white a bit more Payne's grey down here He's also on these areas too the roof Okay, that's fine. And once again, we can get some of that out. What I'm doing is drying the brush on here and just removing some of it. But I don't want all of it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little bit of ochre in there. Drop a little bit of ochre while the paint's still wet. Okay. And also a little bit of paint's grey. What are you doing for that, Cole? Well, the reason I'm doing that, folks, is because it looks rather... In fact, it would be nice if I put a little bit of... Um, burnt sienna in there as well, just a touch. You can put anything you want folks, put a bit of green if you want. Anything you want. It just, that's going to lighten up quite a bit, but what it does, it gives it a rather nice effect. You'll see that in a minute. In fact, I like it so much, I think I'm going to do this other over here. And I think this is dry enough now, this background. So, a little bit of ochre, a little bit of Payne's Grey in there. A little bit more ochre maybe. That's it. Watercolour is meant to be played with. Don't ever be frightened of it. Putting a little bit of colour in, I think a bit, a bit of raw, raw sienna as well. If that's a little too much, dip your, your brush in your water. Now that's nice. Just about right. One more I think we'll do here. And then we put a little bit of ochre in. Drop a little bit of ochre, drop a little bit of Payne's Grey. You could even put a bit of blue in there if you want. You see how that's drying out? Look how nice that is. And this is all going to be the same over here. I'm going to keep it light there because we're going to put some darker trees behind it. Right now, can I? Is that dry enough? Yes, I think it is. So I can do this roof as well now. And now this is, um, I'm going to use burnt sienna for this with a little bit of raw umber again. It's the same sort of colour I've used before, but you'll see that it's a little bit redder. Okay. And in there too. Because this is in the shadow so this is going to have a second coat on this is the first coat i want to keep that ridge tile along that edge which is handy because it means that i won't be touching it that's lovely and again just a touch of raw color in here now here you could put in maybe a little touch of blue just a little touch of cobalt blue in there just adds interest to the picture a little bit more. Got to be careful you don't put too much in, otherwise it's going to look like that, for instance. Like that's too much. So we just whittle it down a little bit with you. Dip it in the paint, in the water, and then just touch it, and you can weaken it. But so far, so good. This is all dry over here now, so what I can do uh, over here is we're going to make this building more Payne's Grey and just a little bit of black now. Now black and Payne's Grey together give you a, like a, a more earthy Payne's Grey really. 
Okay, now I'm mixing that, and then I'm mixing a little bit of a little bit, a little bit of ochre with that as well. So we've got kind of like a well, you'll see in a minute there this effect. Now I quite like that. Now that can go on there. Put it on there, but not the roof. We'll we'll have the roof a different colour. Okay. And do you know what I'm going to do, folks? Don't you know I'm going to put a little bit of ochre in there and a little bit of blue, maybe. That's too much. Dip it in the paintbrush, in the water I mean. Paintbrush in the water and there we are. Sort of greeny hue. I quite like that. I'm going to make it a little darker in that. Um, in fact I will make it darker. We've got to go over it again anyway in a little while. Now here I'm going to use a weaker version of the same colour. All the way over there and all the way over here because these, these are all I'm going to have in the same tones with just slight variations. Okay, so let's go like that. Now do you notice that that bled through there and it bled so I quite like the idea of having a little bit of yellow in there so just a little touch of yellow as well. What I'm doing is echoing my thoughts to you as I'm doing this watercolour because sometimes you think, well, what he's thinking about? Well, you know what I'm thinking. A little bit of blue as well in that corner would be nice. And a little bit of raw umber in there would be nice. So let's just do the same over here. That's too bright. You know how to do that by now. Lovely. Now, I think that looks good. And now over here, this is this is a these are deeper. Well, this one is deeper. Uh, we'll go in with a raw umber on its own now, without anything added. Just on its own. And I'm going to do the same thing with this roof down here. And this one is very similar, this one down here. So we'll do that very similar colour. Don't worry about any of the um, doorways and windows, they will be put on later. That's good. Leaving that roof at the moment because I'm going to turn that's going to end up like that. As you do this, you'll find that it starts to dry off as you go along. So by the time we get along here, when you come back to over here, all of this is dry. It's great. Now this one, what am I going to do about this one? Um, I feel that like I want to use a different colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a very light wash, a very light wash of raw umber on its own here. I want it to be lighter, you see. I don't want it to be dark, this one. That's all right. Good. Okay, now where? Well, I'll tell you where I'm going to go now. I'm going to change brushes now. I'm going to use a brush, a thinner brush. That was a number six brush I've used all the way along so far. Well, I use the half inch brush for the sky, the number six brush for everything along here. But now I'm going to use a thinner brush. This is one of my special brushes. I've had it for a long time and um, I've trained it. How do you do that, Paul? Well, what you do when you train them is you end up with things like that. And what you can actually see is a little, a little thing on the end there. Let me just get my other glasses on. I'll show you what. That there, a little tip, can you see it? And that can work really, really well if you want to get into a very fine, detailed area. Now this is ochre on its own. 
just yellow ochre. And I think I like it so much I'm going to put it on there as well. On the rich tile. Great. I won't worry about these uh, there. They're not strong enough to worry about. But what I have got here is I've got a darker here now this is going to have to be quite dark so I'm putting a bit of brown, dark brown mixed with the raw ochre and darkening that off down there that's it right ok now that's got that what have I got to do? I've got to know what I've got to do I've got to do this light area, the roof here, haven't I? A little bit of the usual colour. In fact, you can any colour you want for it. I'll leave you to do this. Just a little, make it light though, because you want to make it con with all these contrasting colours. What I'm going to do now is put back to switch back my other brush. Now, this is this area here. I used uh, on this roof. I used burnt sienna more or less on its own with just a little touch maybe I'm going to put a little touch of brown in there as well because I want to make it darker there you go but leave that one light then what we've got is a, a darker version of this on this side because of the shadow that looks good like it another thing I'm going to do by the same token I'm just going to get rid of that I'll show you something you can do here you use a, a thick brush and I overrun that very very slightly overrun it so you dip it in water your brush in water and I'm using this brush you see how, how much you can straighten that area off it was a little bit overshot a little bit there so did something about that. Uh, next job. Yes, the next job I think we'll do is we'll just darken here. Now this is going to have to be quite dark, so I'm going to put a little bit of brown in here as well. Oop, that's too much. Quickly reach for the water, pot of water, which I want it to be darker than this background bit. I want this to be darker than that and that to be lighter than that. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, that looks good. If it wasn't dark enough, folks, all you have to do is to put it more on. Now, to make that variation slightly more, I'm going to put in... Oops, that's too much. I'm going to weaken that slightly. There. Get the doorway. Now, I've got a problem, but it's not a serious one. I don't really mind if those two colours merge together, but when you've got two colours that you, you actually put in, the other thing you can do there is you could, let me show you, you can wet your brush and you can bring your brush down slightly like that. It gives you a little bit more of an edge. See what I mean? And later on I'm going to put a line down there. That is pretty good, except that what it needs it's a bit of shadow just under there, like that. And the same thing goes over here, except this would be a... And also now, I've got a problem, I've got to make that darker. And I've got to make it appreciably darker, otherwise we'll hit the background. So let's just put that in quite strong and just see what I think. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, I think that's okay. Great. That's good. Let's have a look over here now. I think all of this can be done. This is um, what, I, what I did here. I used some Payne's Grey and Black with a little bit of ochre. So what we do is we do the same colour again. but only just a little bit darker, you see, like that. Now what I've got to do is to make it darker than this behind here, which means 
I've got to make it just a little stronger than that. Better. So we've got contrast then. Go along here, down here, along here. But leave that bit there. And this will come right up close to that. Down there. And well, that's going to be dark. And just to make it look more interesting, we can put just a little bit of yellow in there. A little bit of yellow, a little maybe a little bit of blue. Anything to make it rather than boring. Oh, that's a little bit too much. Yeah, you don't want to make them boring. Now just under here. I hope you're picking all this up. I'm just making it a little lighter there. Simply because I want that to be darker behind. I know I could darken behind there. But I can't leave it like that. Now the same colours apply in here. Because these are in the shadow. That's it. And in there too. And in here too. three-dimensional isn't it now which is what we want we can go over any of this again that we like but uh, and, uh, I think what I might do is actually break off for a minute with the buildings and um, oh no I've got one little building I've got left to do I forgot about I put a little bit of shadow on there didn't I earlier on put us a little bit more I think also on that ridge tile where that's better I'm going to give that a, in a, a blue roof in a, a little while. Now because that's raw paper there, which I've no objection to, I think we will just add just a little touch of colour to it. A little bit of colour. That's better. Right. Do I, am I finished? And more, I think I more or less am. Um, I think it's time really for me to start thinking about those um, trees now. So let's, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to break off, I'm going to come just a little closer so that you can see a section of this tree close up. I'm going to start with this tree over here. And put the trunk in first of all. Now this is a mixture of dark brown Raw umber, burnt sienna. And what we're going to do here is create. I'm using a number one brush. I won't do them all because they'll take far too long, but if I do enough so that you can see how it's going, it's got to be strong enough to um, go over the top of colour that we've used behind there and the other thing to think about is how high you want it to be. Now I'm going to think about doing something like this sort of canopy like that. Okay so I want it to be quite I think probably that's as far as I'm going to be taking it. So once you've established that then you can just finish the rest of the branches off. Look if you go off. And then I think this is about as far as I want it to go here. There's another tree here behind which we can bring in as well. And that will be the one that will be adjoining here. Like that. And we'll have the two overlapping. Okay. Make it a bit thicker, that's better. I think probably that's as far as I'm going to take that. 
I'm not going to be over, I'm not going to do too many more. I think that will be enough. Now what I'm going to do now is show you something really, really clever. What you, if you have one of these, that's fine. If you haven't got one of these, this is a flat, little flat uh, quarter inch brush. I'll get some more tissue, folks. My tissues are getting a bit messy. Right, and then you use the same colour again. But what we do here is we scumble it in. You'd want it to, you don't want it to be too strong here. Okay. That's why I, I've started on this side, but you want to make sure that you get... See, see the little separations on that is quite nice because it just gives me foliage without foliage, you see what I mean? And it's, no, it's lovely that. Uh, I'm not going to say it's easy, isn't it? But um, it's very attractive, as you can see. You don't want it to be too round. You, don't want, you want some variation. And if you do, you tend to make it a little bit taller, maybe. That would work. Like that. And then fill it in around here. Now I've got all of this to do now around here, so I shall carry on with that. And right across that edge. That's right. There we are. And the thing you can do too is you can also, at the same time you're doing that, is you can also put some little bits of bits of interest bits going up in here. They can be anything at all. They don't have to be. They don't have to have any kind of form at all. Just like that, which I think looks really nice. Now I'll pull back for that in a minute when I've done the rest of it. But um, all of the others are done in the same way. Now I'm going to start the tree. But just before I start that, I wanted to show you. I told you I was going to do this in blue. I'm going to do this in stronger blue than the sky. It looks rather nice like that. Okay, that would be great. Now we, we'll leave that moment to dry off and then I'll put a little bit of dark blue on that side. Back to the tree. Now with the tree we... Same colours we used before, over here. And again we imagine that we've got some lighter pieces of grass and twigs and things coming up here. So we come into it. Okay, imagine. We, we can do more with that later on and then we start the ball rolling with the branches. And the other the other thing branches now we've got is that we've got uh, having finished this uh, area on the side of the building we can now bring the branches right across it like that this is going to have foliage on as the eye did as we come up we're going to make it just a little bit thinner the trunks of the tree quite thick there but then as we go along we use our thinnest part of our brush to get the branches as thin as they go. You can also let me just try this you can also use might be better the number six brush has got a really nice point on it so we might be able to use that let's see but danger is if you press too hard it's going to be too strong. You just need to use the point. You may find that thinner brushes are better for you. But I've got away with that. Bear in mind we're going to be putting foliage on here so a lot of it isn't going to show. I don't want to go very much further up than that. I think that's probably as far as we need to take this. Anyway, it's going to take too long to do the whole thing. So I'll just do that and then I'll show you how we do that. Now coming back onto the little quarter inch brush again as we did before. We then make the 
foliage, just a little bit lighter. We don't want that quite as heavy as we have on the branches. So it's got to be a bit lighter, a bit weaker. Is the word. Now I'll do over here as well. Um, but no, no, I won't. I'll wait until I finish the branches. Do you see what I mean? Yes, you can't really see those thicker branches now. Okay, and down here. Now, as we get to a little bit lower, we're going to have to put a little bit more depth to the branch because we're coming against more watercolour and it won't show up if we're not careful. And there we are. Okay, now as we come down here, and that's going to be quite a lot stronger. Than we like that. That's nice. Got a nice design on that. I like that. And maybe we can we put just a little bit down here as well. Now, I'll finish this off on this side in a in a tick. But that looks nice. I like that. And well, I've um, well, I've got you here. Let me just show you that dark side of that. Just a little more depth over here now. Yes, I like that. Let's go around the edge like that. And I think what we'll do now is make it just a little bit more of an overhang there. Like that. That's lovely. Okay. And the other thing we can do while we're there too is um, do here now let's go let's bend a little bit now, I don't know whether we can do strain it out let me just turn this right round and um it's best to protect it so I'll, I'll use my watercolor sheet to protect it and then we need to come up here now it's not as straight as I'd like it to be but I'm going to strain it up yeah that's better Also, while I'm there, folks, let's use a little bit, of, little bit, of, little touch of black and a little touch of Payne's grey and a little touch of brown. I mix all those colours together, and then we can just put in while we're here a little bit of a window there. Always looks good. Now make that dark, and this one we lighten it just slightly with a little bit more water, so it's not quite so dark. There we are. Now when I turn that around, that's going to look stunning. Might be run along the end of that as well. Yeah, and sometimes it's nice just to put a little bit. And don't, don't, I don't necessarily like lining too much, but just an indication of a line going, that's not bad. And if we turn that down the other way, can we see? Oh, it's beautiful. Now that. It's finished. I'm going to finish this tree off, but the very next thing we're going to do is to come back into all these buildings. Now, you can you've already seen me do the black, paints grey and brown for the windows. I mean, I'm just mixing some colours up here at the moment. So we can actually come in now and put these windows in. Do those four. Then what I'm going to do is just dab it with my. That's it, and it just lightens it slightly. And do it again for me, show you. And just dab it with clean tissue. Like that. And what we get is. Uh, we still get the, the same colour, but it's not quite so fierce. Might as well finish all these little windows off now. That's a little bit bigger. Yeah. Same idea again. 
see how it gets you, you look when you've got larger ones of course it looks a little bit more like a pane now this is a brown door here so we'll make it a brown door it's a closed door a little bit of brown on that I don't want to make it um, too solid colour, that's good. A bit of raw umber as well. Great. And the same with that. Now it can be darker. That, that one there can be darker. And here. And what I'm there, I'm just looking at we can also add just a little bit of texture to some of these buildings now. I'm going to have to do that again as well. That's too light. I'm going to put a shadow on it, but it's too light. And same here. All you do is you should use the same colour, but you make it just a little more texture. It makes it look more... Well, let me just show you what this light at the here. Now, obviously, we've got to be careful here because we're light. We don't want to make it too dark. But mix the colours up that you used before. And then just put them in again. Now that's a little bit too dark, but using the water from, from your pot, you can weaken it. I've already done that one over there. Now I can't do that yet because of the oh, these little windows. That'll take a little bit of time up. darken this again but really just need a bit of shadow. Now I'm going to show you something that you may not want to do but I'm going to leave it to you to decide. What I'm going to do is show you how we can actually use our watercolour to put tiles on. I'm not going to do it all over, I'm just going to do it on these other ones so I'm just going to show you on this one. What you do is you use the same colour you used before but you run along with it I'm using a number one brush here, just a dot dash as you go along. Quite a weak solution, you don't want it too heavy, otherwise it's going to look too artificial. Now, at the moment, it doesn't look anything at all, but once I've finished that, you'll be quite surprised at how good that actually looks. It's a, I call it my Morse code technique, it's a dot dot dash dot dash. It has to go in line with the perspective. That means if you start up up here and you end up straighter when you get down to the bottom. Otherwise you're going to end up like that. One more. No, no I won't get two in there. There we are. Now, doesn't that look nice? Doesn't that look nice? Um, I don't really think it's necessary to do um, all of these because it would be too too much and over the top. This is all dry now so now I'm going to use my grey ochre and not my grey, my black ochre and raw umber that I used before and I want to put the shadows in again. I think this was just a little weak. That's better. Can come down here as well. This one's all right on here over this side, but you see how that gives you a much better dimension. There's another thing too. Now you can't because you, you've got a line here. What I do with that is make it slightly weaker version of what I've just done, and I go down on this edge. You see, like this. And what I do then is I then bring it back out, weakening it as I go. So when I get to here, it's kind of like disappears altogether. 
And the idea of that, and you put something, in fact, that might be an idea, looking at that, to maybe just put a little bit of texture in this building here. All you're doing is exactly what I showed you just now. You're just putting a little of the, the same colour and to dub it with you. Yeah, it gives you a little texture. You don't want any foreign colours, you want to use the same colours. In fact, I like it so much that I think I'm going to come in here as well with it. I should replay what I've just done there to, to see how I actually did that. But that looks really nice, I like it. Other area, using exactly the same colours we've used before. is we'll put a little bit of shadow under here. That looks good. That looks really good. Make that a little darker as well. There. That's good. It's coming along, isn't it? Really pleased with that. One more little window I've just seen that I haven't done yet. Just before we leave, it's because we're basically there, we've, we've done all of it. Oh, I'll, finish, I'll, I'll finish off over here in a minute. Don't need to watch me do that. But what you can do is you can just line that. If you look over here, you see, I've gone over here, I've gone around that building with a fine brush. And you can use a bit of raw umber, a little bit of touch of black. And just run over the edges of the building like this. It just gives a little bit of clarity to it. A little bit darker there would be wise. When I, when I finish this, you'll see what I what I'm mean. Really, you can pick your own spots up here. Get a bit of shadow there. And maybe in the, wind, the doorway. I think that will probably be all we're going to need there. In fact, that I didn't realise before, but I think I'm slightly out with my drawing. Your drawing will be more accurate than this, folks. So what we do there is we make that dark behind. That's better. Small adjustments but they work. Now we've got really finished all of this so now I'll finish the tree off and then come back and we'll start the uh, area of the bushes and then the water and then more of this foreground which is going to be really interesting. <laughs> 